how do we counter this disinformation out there that these third parties can possibly win? They're putting it out in good faith. And we want to make sure that the electorate is not tricked just enough that we end up with another Trump, but way worse this time because he now knows what he's doing. Right. Hello, and welcome to the Politics Girl podcast. I'm your host, Lee McGowan. Let's get into it. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that the presidential election in 2024 is probably the most important election in our country's history, and that has less to do with the candidates themselves than the ideologies they represent. Our sitting president, Democrat Joe Biden, stands, among other things, for American democracy, while his assumed opponent, twice impeached Republican former president Donald Trump, is an autocrat in waiting. Currently under indictment for 91 felonies, including criminal conspiracy to overturn the election, racketeering and charges under the Espionage Act, Donald Trump has told us that his goal, if re-elected, is to solidify the power of the federal government around himself and purge all government agencies of anyone but true loyalists. So this election truly comes down to what kind of America we want to live in. And we don't have to wonder how these leaders are going to lead, because by 2024, we will have lived through four years with both of them as president. At this point, idealism has to take a backseat to pragmatism because there is fundamentally too much on the line to make the wrong choice, which is why we're talking today about third-party spoilers. Only one of the two major parties can win, but to complicate the situation, more than two parties can run. Going into this conversation, I want you to understand an election spoiler is a non-winning candidate whose very presence on the ballot affects which candidate can win. Typically, a third-party candidate ends up taking votes from the party they most closely align with. So, for example, the Green Party candidate typically siphons votes from the Democrats. Voters want a more environmentally conscious left-wing candidate, but in voting for the Green Party in a presidential election, they end up benefiting the numbers of the more right-wing Republican candidate. It's what happened in 2016 with Jill Stein. She received just over 1% of the national vote, so she had no chance of actually winning. But the votes that went to her in swing states of Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, they ultimately pushed the Democrat vote down and allowed those states to go to Trump. So the Green voters wanted a more environmental candidate, and they ended up with the guy who gutted the EPA. And that's the lesson here. Third-party candidates don't need a whole lot of support to swing an election. Since the formation of the two-party system in the 1800s, no candidate outside of the two parties has come close to winning the presidency. In the past hundred years, only three third-party candidates have even carried a single state in the Electoral College. Robert LaFollette won Wisconsin in 1924. Segregationist and Dixiecrat Strom Thurmond carried four southern states in 1948. And former Alabama Governor George Wallace won five states in the South on a similar segregationist platform in 1968. The highest percent of the popular vote a third party or independent has ever received in this country was Ross Perot in 1992 when he won 18.9% of the vote. However, that number dropped to 8.4% when he ran again in 1996. And since then, only one other third-party candidate has won more than 3% of the national popular vote, and that was Libertarian Gary Johnson in 2016. Again, the year we got Trump. So this is the point I want to make today. In our current American system, third-party votes for president are nothing more than spoilers for the party you most closely align with. I understand there are people who feel frustrated that they have to vote for a Democrat or a Republican, but unfortunately, that's just how the system works. If you want to change that, it will not happen during a presidential election. You want more Green Party candidates or more Marion Williamson-type leaders? Then run them in congressional races, in state races. Run them for mayor. Change things from the bottom up or the inside out. But the 2024 presidential election will go to a Republican or a Democrat. That is the truth. You can elect more people to Congress who will fight for change and the laws that you want to put pressure on the president to sign those laws. But third parties in American presidential elections are nothing but spoilers. We don't have to like it, but we do need to accept it. There's just too much on the line to swing this vote away from the direction the majority of the country wants to go by splitting the vote of that majority. We cannot afford to make this mistake again which is why I'm having Rick Wilson on the show today to talk about third parties. 
Rick Wilson is a renowned political strategist, an ad maker, a writer, a speaker, a political commentator. In 2019, he co-founded the Lincoln Project, a political action committee whose goal was to hold accountable those who would violate their oath to the Constitution and place their loyalty to themselves above their loyalty to the American people and democracy. Rick is also a best-selling author, podcaster, contributor to national and international news, as well as an incredibly sought-out strategist for all things politics in America and abroad. So without further ado, please welcome my guest, brilliant, ballsy 30-year veteran of national politics and co-founder of The Lincoln Project, Rick Wilson. Welcome, Rick. Hey, thanks so much for having me back. Or on. <laughs> yeah, well, we've talked a lot. We talk a lot. So you were on my you were on my podcast a few weeks ago. I was. I was. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, no, it's fun to talk. Highly to rated you. episode. <laughs> I'm so glad. Well, listen, thanks for coming over this side of the woods. I know that you know that I'm a big fan of you and all you're doing over at the Lincoln Project, just to sort of push Thank back you. on behalf of democracy. I think you guys are really gloves off when the Democrats are often kid gloves. And I think that's the passion so many of us want to see right now. So thanks for all you're doing. Thank you. Now, listen, there's a lot of things we could be talking about, but today I'm having you on to talk about third party spoilers, a little RFK, a little Cornell West, but mostly we're going to focus on what we probably agree is the biggest concern right now, which is no labels. Does that sound good? Absolutely. Terrific. Um, and so listen, I want people to understand that third party candidates tend to do better when neither of the two major party candidates are popular. So when Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump ran in 2016, both of them had under 50% favorability, which allowed the candidates like Jill Stein and Gary Johnson to get just enough votes to screw up a Hillary win. So Joe Biden and Correct. Donald Trump are currently polling at about 39% right now, the same, which is honestly mm -hmm. pretty unbelievable considering how much Joe Biden has done for the country and how much damage Donald Trump continues to do to the country. So we have to be realistic right now that third parties could be a real problem for us in this election because many voters are currently feeling unhappy with both candidates. Third parties traditionally in this country have a very difficult time getting over 1% in a national election. Mm -hmm. Um, there's only one person in, in modern history who's, who's gotten close to, uh, 20% and that was Ross Perot. Now, Ross Perot was a self-funded billionaire and, and there were a lot of reasons why Perot <clears throat> was able to just write checks, um, and keep himself in the game. The parties we have now, you know, uh, and I, first off, well, let me, let me preface this by saying one thing. I don't hate third parties. There's a big part of me that would love to see America with a more more diverse political system with a multi-party democracy. I, 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 I'm actually kind of interested in that for the future. I'm not interested, however, in splitting the vote because in an election that's going to be decided in the electoral college at very, 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 very narrow margins, I can't in good conscience advocate and I have to advocate against anything – that would even get us close to something where where Donald Trump gets any advantage. Yeah. Um, and I'll give you an example. You know, Arizona in 2020, Biden won it by about 11,000 votes. No labels has come into Arizona and with the no labels party, which they claim they're not a party, but they're registering people under a party. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go to that later. <laughs> um, they've registered 13,000 voters. About two thirds of them, according to our model, are Democrats. Yeah, and voter intensity among Republicans will be sky high for Trump. They may be having their little primary now, but it will be sky high for Trump. This is a game, as we always say, of very small numbers and very tight margins. I can't, in again, in good conscience, think of a worse idea than than the the, the concept of somehow splitting the vote. In a state like Arizona, in a state like Wisconsin, in a state like Ohio, in a state like Pennsylvania, in a state like Georgia, in a state like North Carolina, where every single vote counts. Look, Joe Biden is president because of 140,000 people across five states voted the right way. So the way No Labels is doing this is dishonest at so many levels. First off, they cannot win the presidency. I just want to make everybody clear on that. There are zero scenarios in the world where no labels wins the presidency. First, they're not going to be on enough state ballots 
under the no labels ticket to get to 270 in the electoral college. Second, even if they were, voter behavior in this country over time for the last 100 plus years of third party actions has never gotten over on average about 1.26%. There's always some noise and chatter in the system, but they very rarely actually have any sort of meaningful impact. But they can split a vote in a key in a swing state. They can split a vote in a place like Arizona and or in Maine and they can hand this election to Donald Trump. They cannot elect the third party candidate. It will not happen. Not only mathematically, but 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 in the electoral college math, it, it can't happen. They can't win. So what they're doing here, uh, very disingenuously in our view, is trying to convince Americans that they're just doing this for a for a safety valve because people don't like Biden and people don't like Trump. You know what? They're free to believe that all they want, but by drawing a moral equivalency between Trump and Biden, it should tell you right away these are not serious people. Yeah, these are not good people. By saying that Biden and Trump are equally bad and dangerous for the country, um, I, I don't know about you, but um, I've noticed over time that Joe Biden has not tried to um, burn down the government, overthrow an election, uh, and has not been charged with 91 separate indictments in or 91 separate crimes in four separate indictments at the federal and state level. So. It's a really disingenuous group of people, and we could talk more about like why they're so bad, but um, but th- that's sort of the top line view. They can't win, but they can they can hand the election to Trump. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about that. So just so people understand, and I'm I'm going to back you up and make you talk about RFK for a hot second and Cornell West. But as far yeah, as course, since please. we're since we're already at no labels, like I want people to understand that pre 2021, no labels was different. OK, they were associated with the problem solver caucus. They were kind of this bipartisan group in Congress looking to reach across the aisle, looking to make deals. Do gooder. Yeah, it's not that anymore. OK, so they're trying to get us to buy this idea that no labels is citizen led because everyone is tired of the two parties and the two parties are so extreme. But to your point, like once we start talking about about the two parties being the same. The two, Biden and Trump are the same. Everything is the same. They're both extremists. That's just entirely not true. It's not based in reality, right? Complete, it's a complete lie from top to bottom. Yeah, so the Republicans we can see based on their actions, not on on verbiage or what we're saying, based on actions alone, the Republicans are extreme, right? But a fair amount of today's Democrats would probably be considered old school Republicans on a lot of policy points. The Democrats are still pretty centrist overall, but it's the Republicans that are banning books and forcing women to be pregnant against their will. It's the Republicans who are asking for papers on the side of the highway and passing laws that make it legal to run over protesters, right? The Nazi party is now pro-Republican, right? They had a speaker at CPAC this year calling for the full eradication of trans people, right? And the Democrats Mm -hmm. are pushing for universal pre-K. So the idea that they're the same. same, It's the same thing. I mean, pre-K, universal pre-K and killing trans people. I mean. Same thing morally, right? I mean, come on. Like two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Okay. So, (laughs) I mean, I think we just need to be really honest. Like you guys did an ad at the Lincoln Project that basically said no labels claims to be a moderate centrist problem solver group but that's a lie mm-hmm. because their plan is to steal the election from Joe Biden and hand it to Donald Trump and the republicans mm-hmm. who are funding no labels and the mega donors who are bankrolling them they know exactly what they're doing no labels they know they can't win right but they do know that they could steal the election from Biden and hand it to Trump and i think that's what we need to really get our heads around because This is not the same party when people think of no labels that it used to be. This is a completely different thing that's the brainchild of a bunch of people who have a lot of access to grind with Democrats, with old school um, leaders in the Democratic Party, and they're out here to win it for the Republicans, honestly. Right. And so, so for a lot of your audience who may not know this, no labels was created by Nancy Jacobson and Mark Penn. Now, Nancy is a famous Democratic fundraiser, and she's one of the best fundraisers who has ever lived. She is phenomenally persuasive about getting rich people to part with their money. <laughs> I, if, if I had a tenth of her skill, LP would raise a billion dollars a year. She is phenomenal. 
Her husband, Mark Penn, was a longtime Democratic pollster and consultant. And the origin, the supervillain origin story of No Labels um, in their current iteration is this. When Hillary Clinton was running in 2016, they fired Mark Penn. They were like, this guy is not, he's making up the numbers because Bill Clinton is a, one of the greatest consumers and analysts of polling data in the country and knows how to read a survey like few other human beings you ever met. And and certainly not like, certainly more than any other candidate you've probably ever met. So Clinton looked at the numbers and was like, this is bullshit. You're making this up. I, I'm, I'm not buying this bullshit. The cross tabs don't match the top lines. And Penn got caught and he got fired. And it's been written about extensively that he got fired. So Mark transforms himself in a very short window of time from being a Bill and Hillary Clinton loyalist to a guy who's a Fox News contributor, Mm -hmm. to a guy who's going on Fox during the Trump administration over and over again, praising Donald Trump, saying what a good job he's doing, how he's reaching the working class voters, how he's communicating effectively. I mean, look, I don't know if Trump had had him on Venmo or something, but the guy was out there a hundred times at least saying, oh, Donald Trump is just doing a great job. And then he had a private secret meeting with Trump at the White House to counsel him about his first impeachment. So Mark Penn, I would I would say pretty clearly, has turned in his Democratic Party card, shredded it, buried it in the ground, salted the earth and pissed on it. Yeah, I think that's fair. He is not a Democrat. <laughs> And, and if you're hanging out with Donald Trump and if you're a constant Fox News uh, guest defending Donald Trump, you're not a centrist. You're not a moderate. You're not a middle of the road person. You are a Trump person. Right. And as this as this organization, as, as No Label started to transform, in part because of Mark and Nancy's revenge fantasy, um, three things that were really interesting started to happen. First, their money, which used to be much more grassrootsy. Um, and medium dollar donations transformed into enormous donations from Republicans, from people in the private equity world, from people in the oil and gas extraction industries, from people in uh, real estate development, um, including, and I'm sure your audience will find this interesting, one of their biggest donors is a guy named Harlan Crow. <gasps> Harlan Crow, as you guys may all know, is what Clarence Thomas is sugar daddy. That's what I and call his him. Sponsor. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so this is a group that is now, now we can say very clearly it's being funded by Republicans. Now, a lot of those Republicans had donated to Trump in 2016, got a little sick of him, but they still want their tax cuts. They still want their deregulation. And so They've come up with this idea of like, oh, we can give to no labels. And then when Trump wins, it's sort of like, well, we didn't know. But, oh, well, I'll take the tax cut. And the authoritarianism. Right. And the bonus authoritarianism. <laughs> and so so that's the first pillar of this, of this uh, uh, edifice is the money is coming from Republicans. Yep. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't met a whole bunch of major dollar donor Republicans who are looking to support Joe Biden, sadly, because they really should, because he's done better for the economy than Donald Trump ever did. But we'll leave that aside. The second big pillar of this is now No Labels is a notoriously very, very, very difficult place to work. Nancy Jacobson has had a lot of staff complaints, a lot of staff quitting, being being fired. There are some complaints about the, the racial attitudes in the staff and about a whole bunch of really ugly behavior. There's not a lot of articles out there about it. So as they fired a bunch of their old people that used to work there, they started hiring people, including a bunch of fundraising types and development types who had worked for this guy. I don't know if you've heard this guy's name, but it's Mitch McConnell. <laughs> um, uh, people who worked at the RNC, the NRSC, and in Mitch McConnell's world. Now, so you've got Republican donors Republican staffers. And finally, the the last pillar of this that has been so egregious is they come up with this policy book, this common sense policy book. And a guy named David Walker is, I'm told, is the person who wrote it. I mean, there may have been some other people involved, but but the, the bigger part about the guy that wrote this common sense policy thing 
go through the guy's Twitter feed and it's like, Kamala Harris must be impeached. Biden must be impeached. He's a crazy, lun- he's a lunatic. He's a, he's, he's a nutcase. And there are a lot of these people around them um, that are, that are in their advisors and their ally group and their management team who aren't just staffers, but who are, who are very openly anti-Biden. You don't see a lot of people inside, inside the labels criticizing Trump ever, weirdly, um, but they're not just using Republican donors and hiring Republican staffers. They're also using Republican vendors, Republican pollsters. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 I'm walking. The, I'm walking through it. Yeah. Um, so they've tr- they transformed into something that basically looks like a Republican super PAC, right? Pro Trump super PAC. Now the you also ended up with their their national chairman. Now is a guy named uh, Pat McCrory. Now Pat is the former North Carolina governor who. Y'all probably don't know Pat's name. He's fairly obscure, but you will know that he was the guy who was obsessed about doing the first bathroom bill in the country. Mm. And that was his big claim to fame as governor. And that's, that, that's it. That is what it is. But fascinatingly, his best friend and closest confidant is a guy named Chris LaCivita. And we're told he still talks to Chris LaCivita all the time. Now, you guys may not may or may not know Chris LaCivita. I'll give you the two points you should know about Chris LaCivita. He's the Swift Boat guy, and people think I make hard ads. <laughs> um, and he's also now Donald Trump's campaign consultant. Oh, great. So you wonder why Donald Trump and Chris LaCivita, if there was any danger of someone taking a single vote from Trump, we know how they would behave. They'd lose their minds. They'd call them out. They'd explode. Instead... They're all like, hey, we love no labels. They're good people. Problem solvers. We just they 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 deserve to be heard. And why Fox has treated no labels with kid gloves for the last six months, has their people on talking about how great they are and why people are just sick of Joe Biden and it's terrible. We need to give them a third option. This thing is a giant pyramid of lies. Yeah. You pull one brick out of the pyramid and it's gonna start collapsing on you because Everything about no labels is built on a lie. And I'm going to get to the final big lie of no labels and we can go back and forth. They say there's this cohort of moderate voters out there, centrist voters, who who represent 60% in round numbers in every state. And those people are going to win. So they're saying... And I want you guys to to to, to ride with me on this one because I tr- I try I have hard trouble laughing when I do this. They say that a no labels candidate will win Florida. They also say a no labels candidate will win Oregon. They say a no labels candidate will win New Jersey. They say a no labels candidate will win in Mississippi. They're out of their goddamn minds. Uh-huh. They they're polling whatever polling you see from them comes from Mark Penn, and. Mark Penn's polling is a complete work of fiction. It is all a lie. It is completely made up for whatever purposes. Hence, going back to the Bill Clinton part of the supervillain origin story of these people, when he caught them lying about the numbers, he fired them. But now they've got $70 million of Republican money, and they're pumping out poll after poll after poll, very tailored not to really reflect reality, but to keep them in the news and to keep the donor money coming. Yeah. I, I, so they're I want, bad people. They are bad people. <laughs> but I want people to understand who are listening to this. Like, we're going to keep saying this over and over again. But if you understand our electoral system, even remotely, you understand why a third party cannot win in 2024. But no labels as to what's Rick saying. He, they've released these maps on how they can. They as a third party can win. And every single one of them is ridiculous. Their maps have them winning 278 electoral vote. One has them winning over 300 <laughs> electoral votes. They're flipping states that like have never flipped in years. Delaware, Hawaii, Montana, that kind Delaware. of thing. Delaware. They're going to win the they're going to win, win Joe Biden's home, home state. state. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But Tell then me when another. you say to them, <laughs> when you say to them, "Listen, what are you talking about? That's impossible." You're not going to win every swing state and then flip these deep red states and these deep blue states. Then they change their story. And they sometimes say, oh, well, we actually don't need 270 electoral votes because if there's three parties running, then we really only need 34 percent of the vote. And you're like, well, what are you going to do with 34 percent of the vote? And they're like, oh, well, we're, we're going to use it as a bartering chip and give our votes to whichever candidate of the two party agrees with our most of our policy positions. And you're like, 
Well, which one of those parties is that? Because you believe in right. no voter. You, you mean in- the oil and gas tax credit party? The open up offshore oil drilling party? Exactly. Yeah, party. The one that's all for like no censorship on big tech and no plans for climate change and, you know, national voter ID. Which which party is that going to be? But then the problem is, yeah. is that so their plan is just to win 34 percent of the vote and then give the candidate who you know, agrees to their demands, their votes. But like, when did votes become transferable in this country? Like, what are they even talking about? They are living in a fallacy. That's an actual, that's an actual legal problem. They have not, they have never answered. That's an actual legal distinction. They've never answered is how exactly do you get to transfer your, your votes, transfer electoral college votes? There is no such mechanism at all in the constitution or in the laws of any state in the country. Yeah. It doesn't exist. So I think we have to be really careful and watch what they do and not what they say. Like they keep claiming they're all about transparency, about being middle of the road, but every part of what they do is behind closed doors. Their donors are behind closed doors. They won't release it. Their Mm -hmm. primary will be behind closed doors. They will choose who those candidates are. Their candidates currently, we don't even know who their candidates are. And consider their potential candidates, right? When John Huntsman and Joe Manchin spoke in New Hampshire together, they barely agreed on anything. So how does that work on a ticket, yeah. right? How does that work with the Senate, right? If the president wants one thing and the VP who's to the tie-breaking vote in the Senate wants the opposite, they're going to make our government even more dysfunctional, even if they could win. So it it the whole thing is like a, a fever dream. And, and what it really is, is just a backdoor to Trump. And people really need to get their heads around that. It, it, it really is. I mean, look, even if you were a person of good faith, so there are about a dozen people in the country who are actual experts on doing a third-party presidential run right. or an independent presidential run. Reed Galen and I are two of them. Uh, Reed tried for Howard Schultz in 2018 and 19 to put it together. Didn't come together. I tried with Evan McMullen. It was impossible to put it together. Now, neither of us neither of us were constrained. McMullen was constrained by money uh, and time, but Howard Schultz was not. And even then, even then, they went and did actual work in the field, actual polling, actual studies, actual voter file analysis, actual survey data, and they discovered this was an absolute impossibility. And a guy, and Howard's a guy who could put ten billion dollars of his own money in there, and it's rounding error. And and because of that, because of that, like dis, that, that delta between reality and their fantasy, it's easier for them to sell the, the fantasy because they've never actually tried to do the work to figure out how to do this. Yeah. They are only there to split the vote and kill Joe Biden's campaign. Yeah. And if you look at it that way, everything they do is incredibly explicable and easily understandable. If if you try to figure out like what why would people of goodwill do this? They simply wouldn't. People of of ill will would and are. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. I mean, the bottom line is they're smart enough to know they can't win, right? And they know that they're more than likely to tip the election to Trump, who is really nothing more than a dictator in waiting. But you talk to these guys. You know these guys. They must know. You know, they know it's political malpractice to advocate voting for a third party in 2024 when Trump is in the wings, right? So what are they thinking? Mm -hmm. Like, truly, what do you think they're thinking? Can they not see the writing on the wall? Hey everybody, it's Michael Steele, host of the Michael Steele Podcast. Each week, I discuss key political and cultural issues joined by America's leading activists, experts, and academics for conversations that transcend political boundaries. And that's the point. I want you to join me as we work through real solutions, have honest conversations, just keeping it real, and having a little fun on the side. So listen to the Michael Steele podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, or wherever you get your podcasts on, because you know I love it when you do. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep? If you wake up too hot or too cold, then you might want to check out Miracle Made bed sheets. I talk about Miracle Made all the time because they're terrific. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics making temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Their sheets are thermoregulating, so even two people who run at completely different temperatures can use the same sheets and get equally great results. Miracle sheets are also incredibly nice, but without the high price of other luxurious sheets. So don't put up with being uncomfortable. Get a better night's sleep with Miracle Made. 
Go to trymiracle.com slash politicsgirl to try them for yourself. If you order today, you'll save over 40%. And if you use our promo politics girl at checkout, you'll also get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, they're backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not 100% satisfied, they will give you a full refund. So upgrade your sleep today with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash politicsgirl and use the code politicsgirl to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash politicsgirl. Thank you, Miracle Made, for continuing to sponsor our podcast. So we just talked about sleeping on good sheets, but what if you have trouble sleeping in the first place? Introducing Beam Dream, a healthy hot cocoa for sleep. Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health. Having a consistent nighttime routine is essential to our well-being. Bad sleep can cause weight gain and mood issues and poor mental health and low productivity, which is why Beam Dream contains powerful all-natural blend of reishi and magnesium, L-theanine, melatonin, and nano-CBD to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. In fact, a recent clinical study showed that Dream helped 93% of users wake up feeling more refreshed, and 93% reported that Dream helped them get a more restful night's sleep. Just mix Beam Dream into hot water, milk, stir, or froth, and enjoy it before bedtime. And today, my listeners get a special discount on Beam Dream Powder, their best-selling hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Available in delicious flavors like sea salt caramel, cinnamon cocoa, and chocolate peanut butter. Find out why Forbes and the New York Times are talking about Beam and why it's trusted by the world's top athletes and business professionals. If you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, get up to 40% off for limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash politicsgirl and use the code politicsgirl at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash politicsgirl and use the code politicsgirl for up to 40% off. Beam Dream. Better sleep has never tasted better. Like, truly, what do you think they're thinking? Can they not see the writing on the wall? Well, no. They, they absolutely know what's going on. I know. The, this is deliberate. Nancy right. is doing this deliberately. Mark is doing this deliberately. They feel like the Democratic Party insulted Mark uh, when when the Clintons fired him. Um, and, and they feel like the Democratic Party dissed her when the Clintons got rid of her husband when she was at the, at the, at the committee still, I believe. And... This is a revenge fantasy. This is a Shakespearean revenge fantasy where they really believe if we can't have, if we can't have it, you can't either. And so their desire to leverage the good things no labels did for a period of time with the problem solvers and other things, really, you should have had the warning sign in 2016 when they named Donald Trump as a member of their problem solvers and gave him an award. That's when I could tell it was going off the rails. Um, I don't think they, I don't think like many of us, I don't think they saw the rise of Trump happening in time to put a plan together, to execute on it, to try to at the time hurt Hillary. But I, I think they've had a long time now. They've had five years to put this plan together and they're clearly executing on it. And I will tell you, Reed Galen and I called Nancy uh, back in, I think it was February or March of this year. And she said, oh, stop yelling at the problem solvers, even though they're, you know, about to shut the government, whatever it was, some small ball issue. And I asked her very directly, I was like, why, why are you doing this third party thing? Yeah. Why, why are you doing this? I said, you are not, you, you're not unable to process the numbers here. You know what this will do. And one of the things that people should never mistake with me is that my courtesy with people and my level tone with people is a sign of either tolerance for lies or stupidity. And she tried to bullshit me. And it was the most, it was both pathetic and insulting in the same, at the same time. Um, and, and the fact of the matter is, um, we called them on everything they were going to do. The, the case I've made to you today about no labels you know, was something at the moment we hadn't as robustly, you know, been able to prove all of it. But I made the, the the quick case of why they were doing this. And they ended the call really quickly because they cannot they cannot take public scrutiny. They just can't. They they trot out 
Joe Manchin and John Huntsman and 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 Lieberman and a few other people to say nice things about the third party and to say nice things. Well, we're the problem solvers. We just want to meet in the middle. But the facts are the facts, and and they don't want people to th- to see the facts. They hide all their money. They will not discuss who their donors are. We've had to dig and dig and dig to find out. And, you know, you mentioned their nominating process, for, uh, which I think is also highly relevant. Um, so they're going to have a no labels party and the candidate will be chosen by Mark, Nancy and their donors behind closed doors. That behind closed doors process, they will then present the nominee of the no labels ticket to the no labels convention. That's not how it works in America. That's some North Korea shit. That's some Russia shit. That's not how it works in America. And and they are shameless about it. And I and and to their discredit, the media has been very much taken by uh, well, I know I know that No Labels employs at least two enormous PR firms on their behalf. And they spend a lot of money every quarter on internet reputation defense. So they're they're constantly editing their Wikipedia page and trying to change their search results because people, when they find out what this is, when they find out how dark this, this, this con really is, um, they, I think they tend to reject it. So it's a struggle. I, I can't, I, you know, I, we, we've been, we've been at the tip of the spear on this. Um, you know, and, and it's not like we don't have other things to do vis-a-vis Donald Trump, <laughs> but you know, we're, we're, we're still p- pounding away at, uh, at no labels because, you know they are one of the biggest and most significant risk factors for a Trump re-election. Absolutely, and I think people need to understand that a lot of money equals a lot of things. A lot of money can get you on a lot of ballots around this country because you can pay people to get signatures, and a lot of these states oh, have yeah. very low levels of signatures to get you on a ballot. A lot of money equals good PR, like you're saying. So you don't hear the bad things, you don't hear the real stories, and it's not just kind of Mark Penn and Nancy Jacobson as the sort of Lady Macbeth and Macbeth, you know revenge fantasy people it's also a bunch of people surrounding them you know there's dennis blair on that team he was fired by biden and obama there's ben chavez on that team he was fired by the naacp and then he was sued by his own people joe cunningham is on that he's person on grata Mm -hmm. to the north carolina democrats joe lieberman you were just mentioning he's persona non grata in the you know in general and he's floated the idea of working for trump himself so they're doing all of this, not with the hope and a prayer that they're going to actually be president and vice president, but being fine with Trump winning. And I think we need to get really serious about that. And I, I also think we need to be really serious that Biden won in 2020, like you said, by such a small amount, right? 90% of the people that consider themselves what are called double negative voters or people who don't like either candidate, right. 90% of them went for Biden right? No labels. Yep. And I guess yep. on a smaller level, maybe Cornell West could siphon off those double negative voters, which would leave us with a Trump win. And yep. I know we say this in every single election cycle, but this really is the most important well, election, I, you know? So yeah, we have no, to be so it, serious. It really is. Yeah. And I think there's one other thing, you know, you mentioned Cornell West and, and look, uh, Cornell West is much more in the lines of the traditional independent candidate. He's a crank, honest answer. Uh, he's a very smart guy. I know I know he's done a lot of work in the past, but he's a crank. He is an unelectable crank. But so was Jill Stein. So was Jill Stein. And Jill Stein is the reason Donald Trump is president. 100%. Because she took 20,000 votes out of Wisconsin. And she took 8,000 votes out of Maine. And so on and so on and so on. And West is not really backed by a lot of infrastructure. I mean, Jill Stein's behind it, but, and Dennis Kucinich, but he's, he's a bit more harmless because he doesn't have the ability to scale organizationally to run a national campaign. It's going to be hard for him to be even be on the ballot. Um, in most places. Uh, just so people now, know, Robert in case in case you don't know what yeah. Rick's talking about, Cornell West is a pretty famous academic and civil rights leader who was very close to Bernie Sanders. So the Bernie Sanders people mm-hmm. tend to dra- gravitate towards him. And people see him as a problem for the Democrats because he's kind of this longtime public figure who embodies this sort of general liberal dissatisfaction with people that they see as status quo or centrist politicians. And there's not a 
there's it's a non-negligible group of people who want to vote for someone further to the left. And Cornell West kind of fills mm-hmm. that role. And he's now the Green Party candidate. So if you didn't know that, it's also right. his senior advisor is Jill Stein, who really did throw the election to Trump. So the Green Party thinks they have a chance. And what they're putting out there is why vote for the lesser of two evils when you can vote for the greater good. And I I just it irritates me so much because I fundamentally disagree with this narrative they're putting out that the Democrats um, are the lesser evil. You know what I mean? Like all the things that the Democrats have accomplished in Biden's first term, especially before the Republicans took over the House and turned it into a gong show, has moved the country forward. And you have to look at what the Democrats' plans are moving forward. They're fighting for women's rights and voting rights and union rights and the environment. They're fighting for democracy. It's not the lesser of two evils. The Democrats are the fundamentally better party. And if you are in the Green Party, and if you're someone listening to this show and you're like, I like Cornell West, I'm in the Green Party, the Democrats stand for all the things you want, just probably Probably not at the speed you want them. While the alternative, right. if you vote for the Green Party and take a vote away from the Democrats, will give you nothing that you want. And they will Correct. force you to, you know, thank them for giving you the middle finger. And I think you need to understand that before you make a vote for sure. that will be thrown away. And and look, uh, your your point is exactly right. Uh, this is this is this is the best being the enemy of the good for progressives. Mm-hmm. And, and look, folks, I will say this. Um, if Bernie Sanders and an AOC endorsing Joe Biden isn't enough for you, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. If they're if they're not credible enough for you as progressive leaders, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. I don't I don't have a solution for you. But there is an instinct to argue, uh, I think, among some of the Green Party folks that you know, unless they unless they have this stunt candidacy that they won't get their voice heard at all. But look, they have a voice in the party. Joe Biden's a center left Democrat, little left of center left. But a lot of the things he's doing are the political art of the possible. And he's delivering. I mean, he's delivering. And, and unless you get the economy turned around, None of this other good stuff happens unless you get infrastructure going. None of this other good stuff happens unless you do inflation reduction. None of this other stuff on the environment, in particular, and converting to EV happens. Yeah, you're stuck. Yeah, and and if the bad guys win, if the Republicans take the House again, and Donald Trump is president, and and Mitch McConnell holds the gets the Senate back, which is just because of the map this year and the number of Democratic seats that are up in red states. Is a is a non-zero possibility. If you've got even two out of those three, you're in deep shit. Yeah. The world's gonna go very, very dark very fast. And so that's that's that to my mind is where the risk factor with with Cornell comes in. And I and a lot of folks, they hear the name Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and they think the Kennedy family, the you know, one of the greatest political dynasties in American history. And, and I, I'm sorry, guys. But RFK Jr. is running because Steve Bannon wants him to. Yeah. He may still be a center left guy, but he is a conspiracist. He's an anti vaxxer. He's a kook. He's a former heroin addict. He's a former sex addict. He's a guy with some mental disconnects. And Steve Bannon and a group of people got around him and convinced him to run as a spoiler in the Democratic primary. Now, that campaign is falling apart, it is dying on the vine. But it should still warn you of why these other things are happening. Why is no labels happening? Why is Cornell West happening? Why is RFK Jr. happening? It's happening in part because there are a lot of people on the right who know how to exploit the system and to manipulate people on the left to believe that they should be doing these things. Uh, And and look, uh, Steve Bannon is evil incarnate, but he's a very sophisticated player. Great. And he talked... Mm -hmm. He talked a, a, a guy. Oh, listen! I honestly believe RFK is sick. I don't think he's. I don't think he's mentally healthy. Um, but Bannon was able to, to exploit that, and and brilliantly. You know, if you look at it just like a thirty thousand foot strategy view, why not put the sacred Kennedy name on a ballot against Joe Biden and see what see what shakes loose and try to distract Biden for the year? Because look, presidents, incumbent presidents who get primaried have a rough go. So you know, again. Bannon saw that opportunity to divide the Democratic Party by putting the sacred Kennedy name on the ballot, as I said, 
And look, when when my old boss, George Herbert Walker Bush, was primaried by Pat Buchanan, the guys in the campaign were like, Pat Buchanan's never going to win. But you know what it did? It made us spend six months dicking around with the guy. Yeah, it sowed and doubt. It, it, it made it drained you down the sense of presidential dignity and scope and and power and importance. And you know, you end up with a, a third party spoiler on the ballot. Then too, you get Perot on the ballot, and you got a weakened a weakened president attracted a third party spoiler. I mean. It sounds an awful lot like what No Labels is trying to do right now. Yeah. And I keep trying to clarify to people, like, I like that you're, you're like, I wish we could have a third party. I wish that was a feasible thing. I say all the time, yeah. I don't think we, I actually personally don't think we need a third party because I think there's at least four parties under the Democratic umbrella working as a fundamentally yeah. functioning parliamentary system, right? You're, there are a right. bunch of coalitions. Joe right. Biden and AOC would not be considered in the same party in any other country in the world. There are so many. Oh, God, no. There, I mean, there's so many many different voices in the Democratic Party, the commonality being that they all believe in democracy. And the Republican Party, on the other hand, has become an authoritarian <clears throat> party. And right now, a vote for anyone other than the Democrats is a vote for the authoritarians. And we need to be incredibly clear about that. I mean, the bottom line is a third party yeah, cannot yeah. win in America. They know that. Everyone on the ballot, everyone trying to do it, they know it. Everyone, right. The, the, one of the most fundamentally dishonest things about no labels is they are telling people they could have a winner in this race. Yeah. Could they have a winner? Well, if Joe Biden and Donald Trump are eaten by wolves. Other than that, no. Yeah. And even it's then, probably, probably no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As much as I favor wolf attacks. Wolf. I, I mean, I'm a big fan of We don't have enough wolves, wolves in our but... primaries. That's the thing. I think that's what it really comes down to. We need more Hunger Games action. I've all, I've long I've long wanted to, to release wolves in Rock Creek Park in DC. I think it would really <laughs> spice up the area. Just zhuzh it up. Okay, well, listen, I was saying, how do you think we fight back, right. right? How do we counter this disinformation out there that these third parties can possibly win? They're putting it out in good faith. And we want to make sure that the electorate is not tricked just enough that we end up with another Trump, but way worse right. this time because he now knows what he's doing. Way worse. Yeah. I mean, the the the, the dangers of Trump 2.0, and, and you saw it in the Kristen Welker interview, okay? Trump is not an intelligent man, but he's a cunning man. He's a crafty guy. And so he's taking a read on the abortion stuff with the six-week bans, and he knows how badly they poll. So he's like, maybe we do something different. We make a better deal. He's the goddamn guy that gave us the end of Roe versus Wade. But okay, set that aside. He's calibrating, trying to scooch himself a little bit away from some of the crazy of the Ron DeSantis wing of the party, the Matt Gates wing of the party. And so that's why the risk is even higher. And that's why we have to keep making sure that people understand you're not casting a vote for Joe Manchin or for Joe Lieberman or John Huntsman or Larry Hogan if you vote no labels. You're casting a vote for Donald Trump. No labels equals Trump. That's the simplest branding I can put on it because it happens to be true. No labels equals Trump. If you vote for a no labels candidate, you're voting for Donald Trump. That's the bottom line. And their plan, you know, the negotiations they've done with with Joe Manchin have gone the furthest of anybody. That's why Manchin's left the party. That's why he started a new super PAC. Manchin in particular would run as a conservative Democrat who says, I don't have a home in the Democratic Party. Neither do you. You can't stick with that liberal Joe Biden. Vote for me on no labels and I'll be a centrist voice. And that's how you cost Biden seven, eight, nine, 15 percent, depending on the state. And we can't afford two or three percent in most of these close states. We can't we can't play that game. So, you know, it, it is incumbent on all of us in the activist community and the media community to keep pounding away on the truth about what no labels is. That is a pro Trump super PAC. No labels elects Trump. They're going to spend a lot of money and everybody else in the fight is trying to husband their resources to go against Trump next year. So it's important to keep talking about it, keep, to keep articulating it, to keep putting it out there. Uh, the Lincoln Project, we're, we've been ahead of the no labels curve from the beginning. We started the, we were the, some of the first people to start trying to explain to reporters and to and to other groups why this why this is so dangerous. We're going to do a briefing in the next week or two on on like how the math really works and explain it to people at a level. Some other groups have done some good work on that. But we're going to we're going to explain how the math works, how the messaging works and more proscriptively. What are the messages to punch back on these people with? Because 
a lot of people in the in the pro democracy community, God love them, but they're not wired like we are at the Lincoln Project, where they're like, well, let's write a policy paper and that will convince people. No, I want to go burn their fucking house down. <laughs> I want to go take them out off the political battlefield. I want to wreck their shit in public and private. Is- I want to make sure people know who and what they are. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm just not, I'm just not. And again, that is not everybody's mode. That is not everybody's style. And I'm not asking everybody to follow that particular lead, but I can tell you, we're not going to let them go and and lie to people and deceive the American people about the kind of outcomes that are inevitable if you support them. And if you support a no labels candidate for president. Yeah. And I also say to people, if you hate Joe Biden and Donald Trump so much that you can't bring yourself to vote for either candidate, then don't vote or at least recognize that you're going to yeah, issue a stay pro- home. Yeah. Or at stay least home. recognize you're going to issue a protest vote. You're going to vote for someone that cannot be president. And that's a legitimate right. you know, position to take if that's what you choose to take. But you have to understand that that protest vote will only improve Donald chance, Trump's chances of winning. And you have to be that's honest correct. with yourself about that choice. And if you are happen to say, no, I'm voting for a third party because I really, truly love their policies and I want to see those implemented. And I think this mostly applies to the RFK and Green party people, you have to understand that what the candidates are telling you they're going to get done is also not possible. Because if they were elected, which they can't be, they have to work with Congress. And I think that's the thing that gets people so confused about the Bernie's people back in the day, is that you can have someone that says everything you want to hear. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you that. Wouldn't it be great if we could? And I would be the first to say, yeah, it would be great if we could do that, right? Right. But we can't because we do not function in a dictatorship where the leader just gets to make all the laws. And that is a good thing because a good leader in power could just as easily be, as we see with Trump, a bad leader in power. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to get back into power and consolidate the power of the entire federal government around the presidency. And that is something we do not want, right? So if we want big changes in this country, if you want to see big changes, then you add more legislation at the local level, the state level, the federal level, and you have those people work to make those changes. It does not come by electing a new president and then everything is different. That's not how it happens unless you elect someone like Donald Trump who is ready to throw democracy out the door and turn America into some sort of Hungarian Russian dictatorship. And people really need to understand that that is where we're at. That if you vote third party, yep. you have zero chance of getting that person elected president. And even if that person was elected president, they have zero chance of getting their legislation done the way our system works. Yeah, this is this is not these are not easy truths for people. They want to believe that we can have this this idea. It's hard. But but they are they are it's not easy truths, but they are the truth. So that's it. It is. And it doesn't mean we can't make change. And I want people to understand that. It does not mean we can't make change. It does not yeah. mean you can't have things. Look what Joe Biden is doing on the environment. Look what he's doing on gun control. Look what he just did for the climate, making new climate, green climate jobs for young people. These are all things that wouldn't have happened five years ago. This is pressure from the people. This is pressure from new legislators. And, 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 and in the broadest sense. Don't feel hopeless. Yeah, don't feel hopeless. In the broadest sense. And I'm going to make my Republican listener, the our Republican listeners, their heads explode. Joe Biden is more Reagan-esque on foreign policy than, frankly, any American president, including the other Republicans, has been. He has rebuilt the NATO when Trump t- tried to treat it like an extortion racket. Our allies are coming to us w- in 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 respect and friendship, not in fear. Um, he stood up against a brutal genocidal war criminal, Vladimir Putin, without putting American lives on the line or committing for us to be in a country for 20 or 25 years. When Trump talked about it and Republicans talked about it, Joe Biden has actually gone to the Pacific and made our made our trade relationships better and made our military and defense relationships against a rising China much more robust and much more internationalized. And this is a guy who's delivered record economic growth, record GDP growth, record job growth, wage growth for the first time in like 22 years. That's right. All these things have added up to a record that not everybody sees or feels every single day. But if you take one look at it, look, and I, I'll be honest, I thought when we beat Donald Trump in 2020, I thought 
this will be a time of great chaos. Joe Biden will be a transitional president. He will keep the lights on and restore some sense of normalcy and sanity. But instead, this 77-year-old hustler got out there and busted people wide open. He rolled Mitch McConnell repeatedly. He's rolled Kevin McCarthy repeatedly. He's moved stuff through Congress that no one thought he could get through. He's done an exceptional job as president. And I don't have to agree with every single policy to say, as a historian, I can look at this guy. He's able to do this work at a level that nobody saw coming, including me. And I'm a, I'm a fairly sophisticated reader of history uh, about how presidents and presidencies operate. And I'm every day I wake up like this guy actually had a game plan and knew what the hell he wanted to do. And he's executing on it every day. And it's 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 pretty good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good stuff, it's I mean, no especially so. on on the economic front. People just they have not yet grasped what what a giant shit sack he inherited from Donald Trump and how he has effectively turned the corner on it. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that we could just hit home with people that we're actually dealing with a very successful presidency right now. And four more years of that would not hurt any of us. And that's one of the things I think that people on the left. And I, I, I counsel my friends on the left, Republicans, grow, Republican political activists and consultants grow up with two rules, just win and stay on message. If you're confused about one of the two rules, check the other rule. Um, <laughs> right now, Democrats who did not get everything they wanted on the climate stuff in the Inflation Reduction Act or have not gotten everything they wanted on uh, college tuition or, or guns or anything else, right now is the time to put on the, the happy warrior face and to smile and say, we're kicking ass. This is a great presidency. We're doing so well. This is what Reagan's people did in 1984. It's what George H. W. or George W. Bush's people did in 2004. They dispatched all their cabinet aides, all their allies. They got them out into the world to say, we're doing great. And the criticism got muted and then suppressed completely because they had a smile on their faces. They were, they were like taking credit. Democrats should be out there like, I fucking love Joe Biden. He's kicking ass every day. This is amazing. We never thought we'd get this much. It's it's a matter of affect and presentation. But in politics today, that counts a lot more than policy. Honest answer. Yeah, there so. would be no Trump if affect and uh, presentation didn't matter. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for joining us today, Rick. Absolutely. Tell them how they can find you and keep up with your work as we move closer to the make it or break it. I am the Rick Wilson on Twitter, which I will not call the other name. Uh, I am the Rick Wilson on Instagram. I am the Rick Wilson on threads where you will see many pictures of my fiance and my dogs, cats and land. I am uh, the Rick Wilson at Substack as well. And of course, I am the host of the enemies list podcast available wherever fine podcasts are found. So I appreciate your time today, everybody, and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Anytime. So that was Rick Wilson reminding us that these third party candidates are being deceitful with the public. They claim to be offering a choice, but what they're really offering is an illusion, a dream that somehow their candidate could defy history and do something no third party candidate has ever been able to do in American history and win the presidential election. And if you buy what they're selling and you give them your vote, you are fundamentally helping to elect Donald Trump, which would be an absolute catastrophe for the country. There's room for lots of different voices in America, but this upcoming election has no room for error. We already saw what Trump tried to do to remain in power. We can see what he plans to do if reelected, and we know if that happens, it'll be the end of American democracy. The bottom line is voting for a third party candidate helps Trump and anyone who tells you differently isn't being honest with you. If you don't want Trump to lead us again, then you don't vote for him or a third party. That's it. It's pretty simple. I want to thank Rick for joining us today and you for caring enough about democracy to be here. Now go out and remind people that Joe Biden is doing a great job. Until next week, PG out. The Politics Girl podcast is written and performed by me, Lee McGowan, in partnership with the Midas Media Network and produced and edited by Happy Warrior Entertainment. All rights reserved.